going to talk about gadgets and gizmos for the visually impaired. How many of you have different gadgets and gizmos Thank you. to see better? Okay. And how many of you have more than one gadget or gizmo to see better? And how many of you never have that gadget or gizmo handy when you need it to see? Okay, I hate to tell you this, but three quarters of you raised your hand on that one. So the problem is, when you have a vision impairment, I always relate having gadgets and gizmos, or what we like to call aids or tools, is that it's like shoes. So how many of you in here have one pair of shoes? Who has more than five pair of shoes? Anybody got like 15? Okay. So I'm just telling you this, with a vision impairment, you're going to have a lot of shoes. You're going to need a lot of different gadgets and gizmos to help you see and do the different tasks that you want to do. The one thing I will tell you this is with macular degeneration, specifically macular degeneration, you are not going to go totally blind. You're going to lose parts of your vision, but you're still going to have some vision left. The problem is it's usually in an area that you're not used to using. So we have to teach you to use what usable vision you have, and then we've got to teach you how to use gadgets. And you've heard the old saying, it's hard to teach a dog new tricks. Well, we can teach you the tricks. It's just that you have to have the patience to be able to learn how to use those tools. And what we're trying to do, though, is make them as simple as possible. So how many of you here have a magnifier that you went to the store, um, Marks, uh, Walmart, and got a magnifier because you thought that that was going to work, and it didn't? Okay. And remember, you can raise your hand because half the people in this room can't see you. <laughs> so, so nobody's going nobody's to tell on you. So the next thing that we do is we kind of start out, I always call it an arsenal of aids or my toolbox of aids. But most of the time when we start with a vision impairment, we kind of start simple. And we try to make it easy. The secret to, that we're trying to do is we're trying to ease you in to some of the different products that are out there. And I know a lot of you aren't going to see this, so it's just kind of a reference for me and those of you that are here that have vision can see this a little bit better and to help people that you may be dealing with that have vision impairments. But for instance, in the, the big center there is a large print calendar. One of the gadgets and gizmos that we want to use when we have vision impairment is larger things, but we want them to be in what we call um, like a monotone color, so black and white or white on black, something simple. As you know, the more complicated, the more fancier something is made, it's very hard to see. The other thing is simple things to make it easier. We have lined writing paper. And how many of you, when you write or try to write or do your signature, how many of you go uphill or downhill? So I got a little uh, secret for you. That's normal. If you have a vision impairment, you're not going to write a straight line. Little secret to make it less slopey, close one eye when you're um, signing or writing. It's a little bit easier. You're not going to be as going uphill or downhill as much. The other thing I have on here is the 2020 pen. How many of you here use 2020 pens? Nobody here has never used a 2020 pen? Okay, wow. All right. 2020 pens are, it's a special marker that we use for the visually impaired. I honestly can't tell you how it's made, why it's so special, but one of the things about that pen, it's similar to a Sharpie, however, it does not bleed through the paper unless you sit there and if you do hold it for more than 10 seconds, it will bleed through the paper. But normal writing, it's not going to bleed through the paper. The other thing about that pen is it's black and it's a little bit bolder than a normal ballpoint pen. And just kind of like my calendar in the middle there, if you can see it, what I was talking about is the bolder and darker something is, it's a little bit easier for you to see when you have a vision impairment. So if you haven't gotten 2020 pen yet, if you haven't purchased one, um, the Sight Center has some and Magnifiers and more has some out on the table. And, and I highly recommend them because they're a nice little gadget to have with you. Then we have magnifiers. Just like you said, most of you have gone out and bought some type of a magnifier. Most of the ones you're going to buy in the store do not have a light in them. 
When you have a vision impairment, particularly macular degeneration, lighting is the key. And by putting a light on the magnifier, it's going to make it much easier for you to see, and it actually increases the magnification. So lighted magnifiers are a number uh, is important for macular degeneration. And then the other thing um, Dr. Rao talked a little bit about was sunglasses or glare protection. I was just talking to somebody out there um, a few minutes ago. Her mother was diagnosed with macular degeneration. She thinks she might have it, but she's not sure. So the first thing we tell them is sunglasses, the most important thing um, to protect your eyes from the uh, ultraviolet damages. So how many of you here now wear sunglasses? Good. How many of you started wearing sunglasses after you were diagnosed? So those of you that were diagnosed and started wearing sunglasses, had you worn them prior? On and off? Okay. And you know, and the interesting thing is, for the most part, if you think back, and it's only a few years ago, but like what Dr. Rao was talking about in our, our early teens up to 30s, so that was just a few years ago for a lot of us, back then you weren't running around wearing sunglasses like people wear sunglasses today. If you had them on, you were probably a movie star or your CIA, FBI, or you were trying to hide something. But for the most part, you weren't wearing sunglasses. So sunglasses is the key thing to helping prevent or to slow the, the um, progression of the disease. So for the most part, this is our average gadgets and gizmos that people with uh, vision impairments, macular degeneration, are going to start with. But then what happens? How many of you get a magnifier and then all of a sudden, after a while, it doesn't work anymore? And we'll get these phone calls going, my magnifier stopped working or the prescription in the magnifier is no longer any good or it just lost its strength. Well, unfortunately, it's the eyeball that's lost the strength and not the um, magnifier. So there's no way that I can put more power into a magnifier. So then we have to go on to what we call a little bit more vision rehab, and we have to actually kind of sit down and work with you a little bit more one-on-one -on -one because, again, we're going to go back to shoes. Just like when you purchase shoes, you've got to know what size and you've got to try them on. So we're going to do the next one. And I get this all the time. I've got, I call them dream gadgets. And people will come into our office and they'll say, how come you don't have this? Or how come you don't have this magnifier that's the size of a tennis racket so I can read my newspaper? Well, this one I thought was kind of cute, and if you can't see it, I'll describe it. My first one over here on the left, it's called a prescription windshield. So people come in, and the first complaint I hear is, I can't drive or I can't see as well as I used to. So I think a dream gadget would be as if we could make prescription windshields. Be a good idea, right? Then the other one is my bionic eyes. And we get that all the time. Well, can you, can you, do you have new eyes? Or why can't they do a, an eye transplant? So a dream gadget would be um, some bionic eyes. And the caption on the cartoon there is, no, they can't help you see through walls. The bionic eyes, kind of like... Um, Spider-Man, Batman, all that kind of stuff. So those are kind of the dream gadgets. Anybody else have a dream gadget that they th thought should be invented? In the back. Cloning eyes. Cloning eyes. Okay, we've heard that one before too. Not done yet. Anybody else got any suggestions? All right, here's the next one. The Google self-driving car. <laughs> now this actually exists. It's been on the news recently. There is an article in your packet of information that you got in the support site news uh, letter. There is actually a, an article that was written about the Google driving car. Um, this particular one, they used the Toyota Prius as the test model. And it's actually software, and I, and I know you won't see it, but actually on top of the car is basically like a huge satellite type dish, and that's where all the controls are. And it runs off of a satellite so out in space, it's the satellite. How many of you here use GPSs in your cars? So that's basically the same system. It's a GPS built into the car. So you're going to plug in a destination, and basically the car is going to get you there. Now, I have to admit, I do have a GPS. I don't use it too much, but there's been times it's been wrong. <laughs> so with that said, you know, we might want to just kind of wait a little bit. 
But I can tell you that in Nevada right now is the only state that is legally testing these cars. So if any of you want to drive, you can move to Nevada and you can try testing them out. Um, there are other states are looking at it, but at this point right now, Nevada is the only state that legally is um, testing this car. So some of you come up with these dream gadgets and, you know, I think of stuff like, why can't we do this? You know, nobody, er, several years ago I heard people say, why can't they have cars that drive themselves? So it's getting there. Whether or not I want to get in one yet, I'm not sure. But that's, that's another dream gadget. So then the next thing for gadgets, we all have this, what I call arsenal or array of magnifiers. And they keep piling up and piling up and you keep thinking that I'm going to be able to use them someday. Or they just kind of stay in the drawer. Or you donate them, which is a nice thing to do. But unfortunately, the, the magnifiers are going to change. And I do want to um, make a comment on magnification real quick because I, I heard a couple comments um, out at the table. Unfortunately, in my business with magnifiers, and in the whole um, realm of magnification, there is no standard for a magnifier. So in other words, you can say that I have a three times magnifier, or I have a five times magnifier, or a ten times magnifier. And basically, what that is supposed to mean, if I say I have three times magnification, it's supposed to mean that I can magnify something three times larger. In theory, that's what is supposed to happen with the lens. However, unlike the optical industry where we make your glasses, there's a standard. And if your prescription is written out the way the doctor writes it, it has to be made exactly to that prescription. Unfortunately, at this point, there is no governing body that tells any manufacturer, this is how you have to make um, a three times magnifier or a ten times magnifier. So what we like to tell you is that you really need to try the magnifiers. Don't necessarily look at the number that is so-called put on the magnifier. And this I'm talking more about the ones that what we call you buy over the counter. The ones that you're going to get at magnifiers are more at the Cleveland Sight Center. They're marked. We know what the powers are. They're true to the powers. But I have a lot of people come in and, and I'm going to pick on marks, but they'll say, I bought this magnifier at marks and they said it's 10x and it's 5 inches in diameter. Well, I already know that that's not a 10x just because of the size of it. So you really have to try the magnifiers out and actually just work with them to see what works the best for you. So this is what happens. Everybody gets all these bunch of magnifiers and they're still complaining. Or, this is my favorite, they'll come in and they take two or three magnifiers and they stack them together and then they hold them and they use it. And how many of you here are guilty of that? Nobody's going to admit to that. You put glasses on top of glasses? I've seen that too. Well, here's some new stuff that's out, and it's called electronic magnification. And these units are out on the tables, so if you, you want to look at them again, now that you kinda get a, you'll get a little bit better understanding, how many of you here have used a digital camera? Okay, and so with a digital camera, it's a camera, there's a lens in there that you can zoom in and out, kind of focus in and out, make bigger or smaller. So these particular, this particular one here is called a Pebble Mini. It has a camera on the back side of the, the unit, and what it's going to do is there's some buttons, and again, I don't know if you can see them, but there's a plus and a minus button. The plus you're going to on, push on that, it's going to zoom closer to the material, and it's going to make the print bigger. And you can also, though, with these types of magnifiers, and I, I wasn't able to get it on the screen, but I can change the background colors. And so I can put a black background with white print. And I find that a lot of people that have wet macular degeneration like the black print, or white, a black background with white print. Um, but there is no right or wrong, what we call mode. Whatever is the most comfortable for your eyes, you can use. The nicety of something like this is I can go from two times magnification to ten times magnification with the push of a button. In order to do that with handheld magnifiers, I'd need probably five or six different magnifiers to keep switching back and forth. The other thing is they run on batteries, so you charge them like you do a cell phone, and then you can take it with you. How many of you here have frustrations when you go to the restaurant to read the menus? 
And why is that frustration? Too dark and the print's too small. So the nicety of something like this is we have a nice bright light on there, and then you can change the magnification to make it as, as large as you need. And I guarantee you, though, when you use that, the price will always look less on the menu. <laughs> and this is another new uh, Gasmo gadget um, that has come out, and this one is called the Compact 5. Same principle. We have a camera in there that you can change. So with the push of a button, I'm going to change the magnification. And I'm going to go from 1.5 times magnification to 18 times magnification. This kind of sits on the paper and it glides across the paper. The nice um, feature of this that I'm finding a lot of my patients are liking is because the screen is angled. So you can prop it up, and I've tried to show it kind of angled, and again, I apologize if you can't see on the picture on the far right there, but the person's reading something, but it's angled so that you're not hunched over trying to, to look at the printed material. You can also fold it so you can put it down so that it's not angled, and hold it like you would a magnifier, kind of hover over the reading material. Yes, ma'am. So the question was, will that work well for crossword puzzles? Yes. However, you do have, you're going to hold it in one hand, and the other hand's going to do the writing. But yes, you could do crossword puzzles, get a little um, balance there, but, but you should be able to, to do that. So you can change magnifications, like I said, and you can also change the modes, the background colors. The ideal or the purpose of this is to alleviate, just like I said in the beginning, where we've got five, six, seven different types of magnifiers, You've got one device that can um, handle multiple tasks or multiple magnifications. And I just, again, I apologize if you can't see this, but I'm trying to, to, to um, simulate what you're going to see with a, what we call a standard optical magnifier that has the lens in it versus a standard um, video magnifier and then the new HD5. It's called an HD because it's high definition. So if you have any, any of you have the um, high definition uh, TVs at home, it's going to be a sharper, uh, crisper image. But the other thing is, for instance, up here, this um, optical, regular optical magnifier, that is a four, uh, excuse me, a six times magnifier. You literally can only see about five letters at a time. And then you have to drag it across what you're reading. Does anybody get seasick when they're dragging their um, magnifiers across? That can really cause some, some problems. I mean, I literally have people that get nauseous to their stomachs. So when we go to a larger screen, so I've got five inches on this particular unit that I can see images. The same um, amount of letters, so I have five letters with a handheld, I actually can go down to the next line and I can actually get the entire line on that five inch screen. So if you didn't have a chance to see any of these types of magnifiers um, prior to this talk, when we're done today, the Sight Center has some, and then Magnifiers and More has a, a bunch of them out on the tables. That I'd like you to try them, because I think you'll find it's um, much easier on the eye. Anybody here use some electronic magnifiers now? Couple? OK, good. So this is our new baby. This just came in. We just delivered this this week. This is called the Da Vinci. And I do not know why they named it Da Vinci, but Da Vinci is a CCTV. So if any of you are familiar with CCTVs, they're the big screens where you put paper underneath the camera or whatever you're looking at, and it's magnified onto the screen. And you can control the magnification. The feature that's added to this Da Vinci is, should you get tired, and sometimes, and, and I hear this a lot, when you have a vision impairment and you're trying to read, you have a tendency to get tired sooner, your eyes fatigue, and some people claim, uh, complain about a headache or, or dry eyes or watery eyes. And even with the machines, as great as they are, y there's a, a learning curve and there's also kind of an amount of time that you can spend in front of the machines. So the, f the feature with the Da Vinci, and I know um, Lee's been demonstrating it out there at the table, is it will talk back to you. 
Um, it will read whatever is on the screen. So it's what we call um, text-to-speech, or you might have heard OCR, optical character recognition. So it uses a, what's called a nuance software, and it's going to read back to you print. Now it has to be uh, what I call published print. In other words, if somebody sends you a letter and writes a handwritten letter, it's not going to be able to read that. But if it's published print, the machine's going to be able to, to pick it up. Now, I will be honest with you, it is not 100% perfect. It's going to you know, mess up a word here or there. But out of a lot of the, the products that are out there, this is one that, that really um, seems to, to pick up the, the print very well. So again, we'll have that on display out there. The other thing that Da Vinci does is Da Vinci also has a camera that we can look distance. So if you're in a classroom situation or at home and you want to spy on the neighbors or you want to look at TV, you can move the camera and you can zoom in and out from the, the camera and it'll be on your screen. And then the other image is the camera can also be turned faced towards you and it's what we call self-viewing. And so if you want to put on makeup or shave or you want to comb your hair or you want to um, put in earrings, it gives you that, that, that what we call self-image. Um, and sometimes it's scary, so I will warn you. <laughs> but that's the Da Vinci, and again, Da Vinci's out in the hallway there if anybody wants to see Da Vinci. So here's the next one. And I use this word a lot when I'm talking, and it's the F word. How many of you use the F word? All the time? Well, my F word is free. Okay, it's not the word you were thinking of, it's free. And I'm actually going to talk about something that's actually free. And how many of you believe me that it's free? Well, it is. This one is free. How many of you have trouble reading prescriptions? It was like this big awe. Everybody just and it's frustrating because it's hard to read the label. How many of you get your medications mixed up because it's hard to tell what the medication is or read it? Well, this little unit is called Script Talk. And you know, we were talking about um, dream gadgets. I've heard about this for, for a while, it was many, many years ago, but it never really came to fruition. But this little device, and again, I know you won't see it, but we'll have it on the table at the end here. This little, it's kind of like a little flying saucer. I mean, a little frisbee. I could probably throw it out in the audience. Somebody could catch it. It has a switch. And I turn it on. Script talk station ready. So this is a little device that this unit you would set on your table or countertop. You go to the pharmacy and you get your prescription. On the bottom of your prescription bottle or the vial, there's a little white, uh, like a sticker. And inside that sticker is what we call RFID. Does anybody know what RFID means? I heard... Radio frequency identification detail is what they're referring it to. This little device is put on the bottom of the vial by your pharmacy. And the pharmacy will have uh, software that when they print the label, it will also print this little device, this little sticker. So the sticker goes on the bottom of the vial, and I take my vial and I put it on top of my little uh, frisbee here. And there's three buttons, different sizes and shapes, but the middle one, I'm going to push. Patient. John Smith. Medication. Amoxicillin. 250 milligram tablets. Instructions. Take one tablet three times daily with meals. Prescription date. February 22nd, 2012. Refills remaining. Zero. Prescriber. Dr. William Samuels. To reorder this prescription, dial. Area code 309. 
555-1212. Prescription number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Warning. Important. Finish of this medication, unless otherwise directed by prescriber. Take with food. Other information. Quantity. 30 tablets. Prescription expiration. February 22nd, 2013. I'm going to stop it. But So basically, it has read everything that's on this label that you can't read. And you can actually go back, and I can back it up. Warning. War Refills remaining. Zero. So if I wanted to go back, particularly if you're looking for like the, uh, the prescription number, and you, and you have to call it um, in, and you need to write it down larger, you can actually have it repeated. So how many of you believe me still that it's free? It's still free. Hasn't changed. Still free. Still an F word. Free. And here's where I need your help because we've been working with this company. It's called a company called InVision, E-N hyphen Vision. If you are a veteran, you can get this unit through the VA um, with no problem because the medication comes from the VA and the VA pharmacy will put this label on. About a year and a half ago, the company did a um, pilot program with Walgreens to see how well it would work. Unfortunately, per Walgreens, they decided it wasn't worth it because people weren't asking about it or didn't need it. Now, we all know that's not true. So what happened was the company went back, and they're now working with a company that does mail-in um, uh, pharmacies, uh, mail and prescriptions. Does anybody want to guess which company that is? Nope. CVS? Nope. Nope. Med not Medco? Walmart. Walmart right now, mail in, is working with this system. Now, does anybody here do mail ins with Walmart for prescriptions? Okay. What happens is you will get this device. It is sent to you free. This device comes to you, and then when you get your medication from the Walmart mail-in or from the VA, it's going to have the sticker on it. What we need to do as folks that have vision impairments and have um, frustrations, we need to start demanding that we want some of this help on a, a, what we call a, a patient-to-store level. So what will I have out at the table when you leave today, if you're interested, there are brochures. There was a brochure. Um, it says script talks on it. And if you take that brochure, take it to your pharmacy and ask them or tell them that you're interested in this. It does not cost the pharmacy that much money. From what I'm told, it costs the pharmacy $150 to get the software to print those little labels that need to go on the bottom of the vial. Um, supposedly, once they do this pilot with the Walmart mail-in, there are a few Walmart stores that are using this program. Unfortunately, none in Ohio, at least in this area. There are a couple in the Cincinnati, Columbus area. But I, my guess is this, once Walmart starts doing it, you know that the rest of them are going to jump back on the bandwagon. So I am going to ask you to start asking for this to help because these pharmacies have a tendency to think, well, you know, 99% of the people aren't asking for this. Well, if they don't know it's available, they're not going to ask for it. So you have, we have the brochures out front at the table, and we also have some little tear-offs. And all I'm just going to ask you to do is take it to your pharmacy and say, hey, can you check into this for me? Because obviously the pharmacy wants your business, because if you find out you can get something from Walmart for a mail-in, you may end up doing that. So again, it's still free. Hasn't changed, it's going to be free. So you can continue to use the F word with my script talks, but take a brochure and please um, kind of bug your pharmacist about putting these um, little stickers. The Express Scripts for mail-ins? 
from what I understand, they're not doing it yet, but you know, you might, next time you mail in a payment or you know, prescription, you might want to stick one of those little um, brochures in there and say, you know, hello folks, can you get some of these for us? And the company itself will mail these to you. The pharmacy, Express Scripts, none of them have to do any of the work. This is going to come from the Envision uh, company. So that's one of the practical things. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so the question was if you get my little Frisbee here and then I get my prescriptions and all the pharmacies start participating and if I get a prescription from CVS and a prescription from Walgreens, will it still work? And the answer is yes, because it's all being read off of the, the RFID that's on the bottom of the label. So it will work. So the question is, does the VA have the labels? Yes. So when you get the prescription, you need to tell them that you want script talks and you will get the, the device and then they'll start putting the sticker on the bottom of the vial. Yes, sir, in the back. You mean why don't they just always put... That would be a good idea, one of those dream gadgets, but yeah, unfortunately, they're not doing it. So we need to start speaking up. We need to start telling them and, you know, that we need products like this, that it's going to make it easier. And it's not only for visually impaired uh, folks. The, the, one of the representatives from this company that I was talking to, they do a lot with people that have maybe early dementia or somebody that has you know, some memory issues that might be hard to remember what medication is what. So they'll use that type of a device. Any more questions on my F product? Okay. Next one that I get a lot of questions about or the dream gadget is the cell phone. How many in, you, uh, in here use a cell phone? How many can see their cell phone? How many miss dial? All the time. <laughs> Anybody in here use a jitterbug cell phone? Anybody in here heard of a jitterbug cell phone? Okay. Jitterbug cell phone was specifically designed for seniors or people that have a vision impairment. It is a very nice phone. It is very simple. It does not have camera on it. You're not texting. You're not recording. Uh, it's just a, a simple phone. With the, the cell phone itself, it's a flip phone. It has a very large font and bright screen color on the, on the screen so you can see the number that you're dialing. It also has the keypad is larger and it actually is white. It's black with uh, white lettering and there's like a little yellow ring around the, each of the numbers. But the, the nicety of this phone, not only is it a little bit easier to see, but how many of you remember, hmm, I'm going to say, I'm going to age myself, 30 years ago, 35, that you could pick up a phone and you could hit zero and what happened? You got a live operator. Well, with the jitterbug, you can get a live operator. You hit zero and it dials an operator. So if you need help dialing a number or looking up a number, the real live person is going to dial it for you. And here's the best thing. It's in the United States. <laughs> so you will be able to understand what this person is saying. So the, the, the nice thing, and actually they put it on here, they put US-based operated assistance. So it is a nice phone. I will tell you this, you have to, usually you purchase the phone and then you buy um, minutes or a plan. There's no contract, so unlike some of the cell phone co companies, you're not committed to a year, two year contracts. And the phones are gonna vary, it really depends on where you purchase them, whether it's online or in a store. Prices, I've seen them anywhere from about $69 to about 150 
but you're going through the Jitterbug company. You're not using Verizon or AT&T or anything like that. It's strictly through Jitterbug. And their plans start anywhere from about $14.99 a month and can go higher. It just depends on how many minutes. So that's one phone that might be simpler for somebody to use if you have a vision impairment. Yes? Do they have a loud voice on them? The voice? So the, the question is, do they have a loud speaker? And they, they call it a powerful speaker. It's pretty crisp. It doesn't, it's not real staticky. You cannot adjust the volume to make it louder than a normal phone. Now, um, you can purchase these phones, like I said, online. Uh, Best Buys and Sears also carry the phones. And it's my understanding if you go to Sears or Best Buy, you can actually try the phone on and listen to it. Try it on. Try it out and listen to see how the hearing is. So that might be something to try. Okay, and so she said Best Buy will have sales on them as well. So, you know, Mother's Day is tomorrow, so, you know, maybe gift certificates for Sears or Best Buy might be a, a good idea. Um, any questions on this, the jitterbug? Yes, ma'am. There is no texting, no picture taking, nothing. This is what your grandchild would probably say an antique because it is strictly a phone. You're just going to dial, call out, and receive. Yes, sir. The coverage, you want to know what the coverage area is. My understanding, it's pretty comparable to all the other Verizon, AT&T, uh, that type of coverage. Any and long distance is in there as well. Yes, thank you. Another question? You got that? Okay. All right, so here's the next one. How many of you here have smartphones? Does anybody have a dumb phone? <laughs> yeah, they keep calling them smartphones. I, I want to know what a dumb phone is. Smartphones are your, you'll hear them, the iPhones, the Androids, the Droids, all these different type of phones that basically do everything under the sun except drive the car. The one that I put up here is the iPhone because this is the one that's kind of getting the biggest buzz, the bi biggest marketing. Uh, share right now. Anybody in here use an iPhone? A couple people? Okay. Anybody use an iPad? Okay. Some of the features that I'm going to talk about for the iPhone are also available on the iPad. So on the iPhone, they consider it a smartphone. It is a flat screen phone and because of the size of the screen, you're able to see a little bit more. But there's a feature that you have to build, that's built into the cell phone, and you have to know how to get to it, though. And it's called voiceover. And there's a voiceover setting. Anybody in here use voiceover setting now? Okay. It's in the phone and in the iPad. And it's in your settings. So you have to go into the settings, and there's an accessibility. And you're going to do voiceover. And you will actually turn it on, and it's going to talk. So everything that you do on the phone, when you're moving across the screen, and if you're familiar with the iPhones and the iPads, everything is a sweep of the hands. You're moving your fingertip tips across the screen, and you're getting to the different, what we call applications, or different programs that are going to run. VoiceOver will tell you everything you're doing. So if I'm swiping my fingers across, it'll tell me that I've now gone to the calendar or to the um, application for uh, music. So with, once VoiceOver is on there, you can download, and you've probably heard this and probably wondering, what are they talking about? Apps. Has everybody heard the word apps lately? It's A-P-P-S. Apps are different programs, software, that can be downloaded onto the cell phone, uh, particularly the iPhone. The Droid and the Android also have other apps, but I'm, I'm going to talk specifically about the iPhone. So these apps you can buy. Some of them are free. And some of them you have to purchase, and they can be anywhere from 99 cents to about $15 or more. But some of the features that I like on there for the, the vision impaired are there's a, an app that you can put on there, and because there's a camera on this phone, I can get an app to identify money. So you put this app on the phone, I take the phone, 
hold it over my paper money, and it will tell me if it's a $5 bill, a $20 bill, um, a $50 bill. And it does not matter if it's the front side or the back side of the bill. And I actually try this. I have a friend who's totally blind, and he has this phone. I'm like, give me that money. And I scrunched it all up to see if it could be red when it's all crumpled. And it could read a crumpled dollar bill as well as a crisp right to it. Uh, you can even put an app on there to look up words in a dictionary. You can put your bus schedules on there. And one of the ones, and they have a couple of them, and I just saw a, a newer one, a color identifier. I know this is a complaint with a lot of people that have macular degeneration. You know, I can't tell, is it black, is it blue, is it brown? Same thing, you would take this smartphone, hold the camera over the piece of clothing or whatever you're looking at, and it would tell you if it's brown or blue, black. Now, it is not going to go it's navy and, and, or that it's uh, teal or you know, eggplant, but it's going to get you at least in the right color scheme. So again, these are different applications that you can put on your cell phone, on the iPhone. Same thing, you can do that with the iPad. Same type of applications can also be put on the iPad. Any questions on the phones? Uh, we'll start over there in the back. Gentlemen? I didn't hear the question. Can you tell if the money is counterfeit? Okay, the question is, can you tell if the money is counterfeit? I do not believe so, but I, I could be wrong. I haven't tried it on my counterfeit money, but I'll have to try it. Yes, ma'am. If you can't see, when you go and, um, how can I describe it? There's like a little um, application screen on the um, unit. It talks to you as you're touching it. So it's going to tell you App Store. And then you can just scroll down there and it will read every different application that's on the, the screen. Yes, sir. Can you scan a traffic light? Probably not, because I'm thinking that the windshield is going to be in the way. But it's a good question, because I honestly don't know. I have not tried to scan um, a traffic light. But that's a good, good question. Any other questions on the smartphones? All right, so here's just finishing up. So, the, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So the question was for the apps, are they expensive? Um, in a lot of cases, you can get free ones, so it doesn't cost anything. And then they can charge you. Sometimes they're $1.99, sometimes they're $3.99. It really depends on, uh, let's say, the potency of the application, how much it's going to do. So you can get a variety of pricing on the applications. Why don't you move on the west side somewhere? <laughs> Why don't I move on the west side somewhere? I've got to get a bank to give me a loan so I can get over on the west side. I, I'm going to get one of those Google cars for you so that you can just, and I'm going to Google it just so that it comes to the store. How's that? So the, the biggest thing, and I hear this all the time, and even from the, the eye care professionals that we deal with, it's like, how do you keep up to date on all these gadgets? Because literally, there's something coming out every day, all different kinds of uh, devices. And it is very hard. It's very hard for us trying to keep up on the devices. How do you compare them to everything? You know, because you've got one company says one thing, another company says another. So that's kind of my job. That's my, my issue. I have to keep up to date on that. But the other thing I want you to remember, that you're not alone trying to keep up on these um, gadgets. But similar, doing things like attending this yearly support group, the Macular Vision Research Foundation support site, meetings, you're going to learn and see more of the different technology that's available. If you subscribe to the su support site news newsletter, and there's one in every one of your blue packets, those are sent out quarterly, they, those will also have a lot of updated information, and there's information on gadgets and gizmos to make life a little bit easier. Continuing your generous donations to the Macular Vision Research Foundation also helps because, again, we can get out more information to you and let you know what's, what's out there, or at least tweak your interest. And then also keeping up to date and, and knowing what's going on, if you've got access to the website, Macular Vision Research Foundation's website, 
um, mvrf.org. Or then I also have a website, magnifiersandmore.net. It's very long. I'm trying to figure out how to shorten it. Can't do that. Um, but those also will have information on different gadgets and gizmos that are out there. Again, to try to make your life a little bit easier and less stressful.